What is up everyone? So as you guys know, this time of year is busy. We are overloaded and the one thing that really suffers around here is our diet. So being in the shop all day, we tend to pick convenience over nutrition. Until now. We have factors never frozen, no prep, no mess. Gourmet chef prepared. Ready for this, poke a few holes. Screwdriver. Screwdriver. Of course. Throw it in. Two minutes. Start. Oh man. That was good. It just smells so good, dude. Wow. So, I know, this is so good. Dude. Oh, dude, it smells so good. Oh my god, dude. How is this just a heat up meal? That looks official. It's, we've had quite a few of these, dude, and we're always fighting over them. Yeah. It was so good. Mmm. Mm. That's really good. I'm getting another one of those. What do you got there, Steve? A little buffalo chicken breast. Spoon. Apple mustard pork chop. See, I got the boys eating good. So we got the whole team eating good, not sacrificing the convenience that we love while also getting that nutrition that we all very much need to keep us going and keep us productive, so. So guys, head to go.factor75.com slash jimmyo130 and use promo code jimmyo130 to get $130 off across six boxes. Once again, head to go.factor75.com slash jimmyo130 and use promo code jimmyo130 to get $130 off across six boxes. Now boys, let's get back to work. What is up everyone? So I walk in and we got Spoon going crazy over here. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Ant get dry ice this morning and they're breaking off all the sound deadening in the E36. Wiring's we... out. You took oh. you did take all the wiring. Most of it. I gotta pull the dash out. I'm not looking forward to that. So we're pulling it out, pulling it out right now. Yeah, heat of course coming out. Okay, so Purpose listen, listen, my my goal with this thing was to get all the parts super fast, throw it together, and just get it on the track, start getting some seat time in it, I guess is the term. So, but everything is on back order. It's, it's been a process. I've been spending like every week and more of my life trying to figure out how to get stuff faster. But we that means we have about two weeks till basically everything comes in and whatnot, kind of screws the plan up, but whatever. That being said, the cage it will show up sooner than two weeks. So I think we're going to jump straight to caging this thing because why not you it looks like you like putting cages in time is a very valuable commodity can't waste it so we're gonna do the cage screw it spoon is doing the first step and that's getting all the sound deadening out of it the dry ice trick right so use the dry ice to harden the sound deadening and then you blast it off wear gloves wear gloves honestly i love to see it this is pretty freaking cool but going back to the main issue of the week the vvl s15 right we left off the last video uh, having issues with the engine I said thrush instead of thrust and it drove everyone nuts. I am sorry, it is thrust, not thrush. It is me being very bad with English like I always have been. So we had an issue where when we pushed the clutch in, the engine was tightening up enough that it would actually stall the engine down. You can feel it when you crank it by hand. And we've been trying to do every single test under the moon before we try and pull this thing apart, right? Because I don't want to pull this thing apart. So I've talked to a lot of people I trust. I have done even more tests and well, we're getting to a point where we're gonna drain the oil and if there's stuff in it, we're gonna take it apart. If there's not stuff in it, we might just let it bang. I like that. So we're gonna find out and I know that doesn't make sense to a few people, we'll talk more about it in a little bit, but we're gonna drain the oil right now for the first time and this might shut us up. Please, please do me good. So this is a brand new engine, so to see a couple sparkles here and there isn't a big deal, but uh, if there is an issue, we will see it. Oh my God, my heart is racing. So if there's stuff in the oil, that means that the resistance in the engine is being caused by metal on metal contact, right? That's what we don't want. Or something being too tight and causing bearings to wear excessive. If there is nothing in the oil, that means it's something else, which means it might not be as big of an issue as we anticipated, which is really good news. Now we pan for gold. I don't really see anything. I don't see anything. If it was metal on metal contact, we would be seeing metal in the oil. It looks good. It looks good. But here's the thing, oil goes through an oil filter. So let's get the oil filter off, cut this thing open and see if anything's mixed up in the filter. There we go. So let's see. Usually you'll see all this stuff kind of caught in the, uh, there's no bearing material in this. There we go. See, there's a little bit of metal right there. 
little bit of grime in it too. But this is the original oil filter from mm -hmm. the first startup. We never changed it. And uh, this is why you usually do an oil change like Maybe right away, right? Because yeah. you will get stuff from machining, stuff from assembly. We are looking for excessive amounts. Seen more trash than metal. Yeah, I'm seeing more exactly, just like nonsense. <laughs> just dirty assembly. Yeah. Dirty assembly RTV. We got this thing apart and honestly, I don't really see much. It looks more just like dirt and nonsense and RTV than any metal actually being in here, right? So where I see this coming from is the engine did sit without a valve cover for a very long time. It just got through the oil and the filter, caught it. I mean, that's the reason why you have a filter, but I don't see any, there's no metallic reflection at all in any of this, no. which is which is good, right? Mm -hmm. That means metal isn't rubbing on metal, causing metal to wear away, causing issues. That's what I'm worried about, so. This is good news. This is actually really, really good news. This is something I should have did that day, but I think I was too, just in your feelings. De just distraught. Yeah. I'm gonna use the word distraught. You're in your feelings. I You're had a rough out. weekend too. We still gotta talk about that, but uh. I don't know. We need a game plan here. Mm. All right, all right. So this is now the controversial part. This is the weird part. I know I'm probably talking a lot, but I want you guys to come for the journey on all of this experience. And well, this is a big one. I've talked to a lot of people that I uh, respect and trust very widely and kind of put up together a game plan or a plan of attack here. So summarize this whole thing, right? Car runs great, uh, but when we push the clutch in, it stalls the engine because it adds extra resistance on the engine. Do I think it's a transmission and all that? I do not think so, that because we did a bunch of tests with everything on, but that's a whole different fiasco, right? So usually when this is an issue, there's an issue with clearances, right? The engine's too tight or there is a thrust, not thrush, issue with the engine. Everything that the engine does shows us that there isn't an issue. There's no play in the crank. Um, the oil doesn't smell burnt from hot spots and usually you could smell it pretty clearly when you drain it. There's no material in the oil or in the filter. No weird noises, there's nothing. Everything checks out other than the fact that it's, it still does this, right? You take out the engine, take it apart, send it out, get it checked, do all this, very time consuming and very expensive. Now what we can do is throw a little bit thinner oil in it because we had really thick oil into it to help bring down the oil pressures because they're a little bit high. And then uh, we can put it on the dyno, get some load under it for the first time and see what it does. Drain the oil again, make sure there's nothing showing up in the oil at all and um, just let it rock and see if the issue goes away or gets worse. So we're gonna put some oil into it, get on the dyno, get some load into it and just see what happens. All right, everything, I mean, everything looks good. It sounds amazing, it runs amazing. There's a little bit of crunchy up front. If you hit on camera, it's just the power steering. Um, I mean, like, everything about this thing is amazing. Too bad it's raining out because we're gonna do our first test drive in the shop, onto the dyno. Ah, oh, it's on the ground. I think it got lower. It got lower, for sure. Oh, it did definitely get lower. Oh my god, look at it right here. My engine might potentially be bad, but it looks damn good right now. <laughs> Interesting. I think the wheels are rubbing in the rear. Like metal. Yeah. This twin disc is rough. Kind of look cool though from the back or run away. I hope so. All right, before it goes on the dyno, we gotta look. Make, make the back wheels not rub. Why does this thing look so cool on the damn dyno? Does it? Good. Already. I know this price. That chatter is the, the chatter. Disc, it's, right? it's a twin disc mixed with a CD. So it's just CDs are just noisy. I've had many of them. Just look, look back at it, Evan Dino. Look back, dude. Look at that. Looks. It could just stay there. Like exactly. Even if the popped right now. That thing's staying on the Dino because it Front looks bumper so hood. sick. That's it. <sighs> Those wheels don't let look that good being slammed. Almost want like a functional height. Yeah. I said that. I know you I said, said that. This car deserves a one piece wheel with a meaty tire on it. I know. Fat we, tire. I'm trying to find that damn one piece wheel. It's not that I don't know what wheel it is, I just can't find the damn wheels to buy. That's the issue. So. Boop, boop, 
Boop. Oh, this is the first time they're all next to each other. No <laughs> way. You're right. I didn't even put that together. It's the first so time they're all next to each other, and they're all... All the, all the sisters, they finally meet. Bundled up. Now, now, now hear me out, ready? This lift. White. White. Red. Yeah? Yep. White, red. Love Just that. Jimmy Oaks' S15 channel. <laughs> Before I start making ruckus with this thing, I'm gonna pop over and check out what Spoon's been up to. I just see more and more stuff getting ripped. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, no, it's gotta go. It's not a waste saving thing. It's a simplifying thing. If you have electrical issues at the track, you're not gonna die egg it very quickly. No. But if you got a if you got a simplified harness and, you, and something's not working, you chase you chase like one wire. And since I'm the one that's gonna be working on it, I guess he's the one that's gonna be working on it. So uh, it's it's weird, but I don't hate it. This is good. This is a good thing. We're finally giving this car a purpose, and I love it. So I'm gonna shut up about it. But so far, I did a couple partials into the car to make sure everything's safe and good. The car sounds great. Everything's good. Honestly, everything's fantastic right now. So. We're gonna do our first pull. Looks like gate is only about 11, 12 PSI. Uh, no BBL, which is gonna be a big power increase up top. So don't be too underwhelmed by the numbers just yet. Right. 261. Yeah, 261, 250. 11 PSI gate. Sounds amazing. Does it sound good? Yep. Sounds amazing. Good, that's what I, yeah, that's good. I, I'm like, there's too much going on for me to take, even take in the noise right now, but everything looks great. But everything sounded healthy up there, everything sounded good, no crazy. Yeah, yeah. I didn't hear any weird noises, Everything all the way good. through. The real question is, when does VVL want to kick on, right? I don't see any major signs in the graph about when, but we're gonna throw it on, see what the graph says, and adjust it from there. So mm. let's get this thing kicking ass on 11 PSI, and then, go from there. So if you guys are new to this or haven't been paying too much attention, we have a VVL head SR20, which is essentially Nissan's version of VTEC, right? When we switch on VVL, there is a whole other set of cam lobes on our cams that are bigger and more aggressive than than, than our full-time cam, if that makes sense, right? Mm. Full-time cam, whatever we'll consider that. So when we kick on VVL or well, VTEC, um, it's like we're shoving bigger freaking more aggressive cams in the motor out of nowhere which is sick, so we should see it open up pretty good. BVL, you know all about it. The Catfish VTEC. <laughs> the Catfish, that's rude. That's rude. All right, let's hear this thing. Let's hear this thing, Bart. All right, let's go check this thing out. So, if you look at the two graphs next to each other, looks like we turned VVL on a little too early because as you can tell, the first run is gold and our last run is teal, right? So we lost power to the mid-range, but the peak power grew immensely, right? So that's where the VVL shines. With RPM, airflow becomes everything. And with the bigger cam profiles, we start to see power increases up top, right? So it looks like around 5,500 is our cross point for VDL. See how it crosses right there? Mm -hmm. So we should activate. So that shows us exactly where we need to be activating our VVL. It's easy as that. We're gonna change that to 55 and just try and clean this whole thing up. But it's pretty cool, because look at, if you get the crossover, right? Your graph keeps climbing and then your torque stays flat. Love that. So at about 10 PSI it makes 280 horsepower, right? We figured out where VVL crossover likes to be at least at this boost level, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start putting boost in it because the map is definitely clean enough to start accepting some of it. Where I wanna leave off is around 4, 450 maybe mm. on pump gas. You know, it's pump gas, there's a limitation to it. We don't really have EGTs or back pressure sensors, so we don't really know how far we can push it on pump, so it's better to be safe than sorry. And then we'll leave it open for ethanol to put it on a kill, right? Because this long block should be good for more than the turbo is, and the turbo's good for like 660, so. So we made 337, 285, which is, all, and the curve looks great. The red one. Look at that. Yeah, it looks that like torque. a torque. That looks like a VVL curve, so. That was only 14 PSI. Since we're getting into the actual efficiency range of the turbo, the 
horsepower per PSI will increase, right? That's a big increase for only four PSI. Yeah. But that curve looks sick. Awesome. We just need more boost. That's it. That's it, more boost. Plus 20 horsepower. Plus 20 horse, so we probably picked up like a PSI. Fast grab. I, I have 95 percent sure it's not the engine anymore. No. I was so stressed out before, so like overwhelmed, just like what happened during the weekend, and then like coming back and like this with the car, like it definitely got me like a little too nervous. I mean, when, when you when you put pressure on the engine, it stalls. Usually, that's a huge problem a huge problem and uh there's got to be something going on going on in the transmission because the engine is like it's too happy it just it's work it sounds good yeah it sounds great it sounds amazing all the numbers are good it's behaving so well whatever so be it we'll figure <laughs> it out but for now let's get this thing over 400 get it cleaned up get it happy and then we'll drain the oil and just triple check over everything so. coming in it's crazy you could just like you could just tell how much more of these heads flow by like how much power we're picking up at the higher rpms mm. it's ridiculous Did you so good so good it's 18 psi at about five grand and then it did slowly fall off to, to 14 psi but what's ridiculous is the boost fell off four PSI, right? Mm. Well, the graph still is climbing. So if we kept boost flat, it would be ridiculous. It'd just be like this. So let me not change the 18 PSI at five grand, but I'll use the boost control to ramp it out so the turbo doesn't fall off. Mm. So it's 18 flat and we'll see what it does. It's gonna, the graph is gonna look ridiculous. <laughs> Dude, look at the dashes out. It's stripped. Yeah, that was a catfish beat tech. What do you mean? It don't, it don't hit like K-Series. <laughs> it don't hit like K-Series. Calling us out, geez. Okay, so here, I, I'll, I will give K-Series the fact that they also have a VTC gear, right? Mm. So not only does K-Series have VTEC, but they also have a variable intake cam, which is good for the low ends. If this thing had a variable intake cam also, game over. Spoon, you gotta, you gotta stand out and hear this next one. Yeah. All right. All right. Look at this. This is like, it's so, it's good. Bro, I don't sleep. No, I love it. This is sick. I need this. This is good. Oh, this now is... you're good with it, right? Yeah. Yesterday you were stressed. Well, you pull the band-aid, it hurts a little bit, then the pain goes away, spoon. Fair enough. And I'm in a good-ass mood because my car is running, all right? Let me ride the wave. Smooth, yeah. All right? No, this is good. This is good. We all knew where this car should have been and where it needed to be. Just knock the wall down yesterday. And we just... We need someone to knock the wall down. Spoon knock oh, the wall down. down. All right. It's down. It's down. This this is a good this is a good thing. All right. Good thing. So I called Mr. Jamie Marsh himself to figure out how how high I can safely rev this engine to because I'm not very familiar with the VVL head and he is the VVL daddy himself. So mm -hmm. he told me I could spin it up to nine grand, even with it being shim still. So um, he told me to stop being a bitch. Rev it higher. So, as you can tell, all the power is up top. Yep. All of it. He said that thing doesn't even start until seven grand, and we're only revving it to 75. So, um, we're going to let this thing spin to 85 this time. A little nerve wracking. Same boost. This is going to be crazy. That's the number. That's so sick that it, it was able to keep the torque out. And of course the graph's yellow, so you can't see it. <laughs> yellow. It, it didn't hate spinning that high. No, it did not. Oh, let me highlight this better. All right. This is where the head shine. I mean, look at this thing, right? This was our last run. And look at it all the way up top. It is so happy. This thing's just flowing. It's not even like the torque dives. Like, you know how usually at high RPMs, torque will just fall off because mm. the head just cannot flow it. This thing is just like, no, we're cool power keep going we're happy 
It's like the dyno graph didn't even start till here, right? <laughs> this is this is 5,000 RPM. It, and, and that's where it shines, right? Still going. Still going. It is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, I wish I had a, not a shimless head now to like rub it even higher. Because it, look at it, it's happy. It, it will happily spin higher. That's the, 85? The 8500. The scary thing is it still has valve shims, right? Which is SRs are notorious for throwing those things out the engine. The limiter is what will help contain it. But even then, it's nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now we have a soft ignition cut. Everyone goes back, oh, I want fuel cut, ignition cut. I think it's way ag more aggressive with a fuel cut. So I have it with a soft, linear, digressive fuel uh, ignition cut. And it seems happy. It seems very happy. That is fucking cool. That is so sick. That's the number. That's 450 horsepower. That was what? And it, and Flat 18? Well, I got to look. <laughs> but um, it only made 364 pounds of torque, which is awesome, right? Because we said torque is what causes stress on the engine. Not the horsepower. It's the torque. And the fact that peak torque really didn't get that high means that that 450 isn't really stressing the engine out that bad. No. It was about 18 PSI flat. Yeah, it held it flat that time. Crazy. Great. It's so fucking sick, dude. Wow. What a flip of emotions. Yeah. Still, it still does the... Not as bad. I mean, Interesting. Yeah. It's not stalling it. No. It's not stalling it. Oh. It's dropping, but it's, it's how it's much is it dropping? Sixty RPM. Sixty? That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh man! Wow. Steve, you hearing this thing hit from the office? I did hear it hit from the office. I, I I'm. That's the look on your face is good, right? It's Everything good. good? That been good, guys. Went away. I love that. Interesting. Love that for me. Rowdy. Rowdy. Loud. Yeah. Sounds good though. It, I don't think it's that loud. No. no. I didn't Team. really hear the VVL. A, a good loud. Yeah, it drives me nuts. You don't really hear it. How come? It's working. Yeah. V band. Crack. Yeah, crack. Yeah. What do you crack. know about that crack? I know all about that, boy. Crack. What do you know about that crack, though? Crack. So I want to do a pull with the VVL completely off, so you guys can actually see the difference in power gains from the VVL itself. So that's, right. what, that's what this pull is. Yeah. Hundred horsepower up top. Yeah, crazy, right? So it's probably gonna look like a typical SR20 power band where it kind of goes but then falls off. Mm. So we actually had to cut the run short because it was getting choked out over here pretty bad. So you can see the big difference here, right? We have purple to brown. Mm -hmm. The torque falls off pretty hard, right? It's, it it, it, it yeah. drops off very dramatically, and then the, of course the power is gonna follow, right? The power doesn't go anywhere. Instead of taking off and going crazy, it just. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, I mean, it's a hundred horsepower different right here. Ah, oh. VVL. It's good. If this was a standard DET engine, we'd be tuning this. All right, this would be our power band. 7,200 RPM right here. That's it. That looks That's pretty it. typical, right? Yeah. That looks like a DET power band. VE head on it, and you get this. Unlocks a whole different level of power. It's like a whole nother field of fun just opened up right here. That cool. is. It's like the fun ain't over yet, boys. And, and, baby up. So, is it worth it? I'd say so. So I'm gonna call it 450 horsepower, 18 PSI. This hey. Thing's, this thing's sick. Do we do the dyno launch? Oh yeah. Yeah. Should we set up a crazy <laughs> limiter? I'm scared to play with crazy limiter settings at high RPM. Mm-hmm. All right, we, we still got rocker arms in here, but, uh, yeah, let's do this. So sick. I have such soft limiter settings that like, I'm hitting limiter, I'm just like, you can kind of hear it, right? Yeah, you can hear that. Yeah. Does it look fast? Yes. Yes. 
so fast. I'm like in the car and I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, but the car is quiet. Yeah. It's like a, it's quiet. It's right. Is it? Or is it it's just not me? a loud SR. It's not loud at all. Like there's not a lot of noise. The only thing that makes noise is the damn CD because it's a stupid CD. CD trans. But I think just to finalize this video and to finalize all my stress was drain the oil. Let's pull that filter off. Let's check it all one more time and say good riddance, mm -hmm. right? That's I'm it. Like nervous to check it, but I'm also confident it's Let good. it cool down. That's our first rendition. We still got tuning to do on this thing. Oh but yeah. Rendition number one, quick pump gas tune, 450 to the face. Cannot wait to drive it. So the first thing we want to see is, or smell is if the oil smells burnt at all, right? If you mm -hmm. smell like burnt oil, which is a very distinctive smell, that means there's something in the engine that has like a hot spot, right? Something that might just be too tight. Then obviously we're gonna look about material inside the oil itself. I don't smell burnt oil at all. And when you smell burnt oil, you smell burnt oil. Want a magnet? See anything, looks good to me. It, it looks fine. I mean, this was the first time we put it under any type of load and we definitely gave it the sauce. Mm -hmm. So um, if we're gonna see any chunks, anything, coming out or any material coming out it would have been now so uh let's cut the filter open and hope that it looks just as clean it's better than the last one so we're looking for like metal, metal. right rtv 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 it looks way cleaner than before doesn't it there's just a lot of dirt and like dirt, nonsense yeah. in the last one but look at it that looks pretty good I don't, see any bearing, I don't see any bearing material, so that's good. If we're gonna see it, it's definitely after that. We did a lot of pulls, yeah. A little bit of RTV. Like it's a Subaru or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. BRZ. That's good. You'll sleep okay tonight. I'll sleep okay tonight, that's for sure. Oh. What a day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this has been a long, long day. A lot of, we actually filmed quite a bit back and forth. The car looks insane on the dyno and i probably filmed this video very frantically today because i feel like i was on edge the whole time but it is actually drying up today but i gotta get home and edit this video so i can get to bed at a normal time and uh next video hopefully we can take this thing for its first test drive and i'm really excited to see like how it feels having the extra rpm which translates to extra wheel speed in the chassis because i'm so used to just driving you know s chassis but only revving them to seven grand i have another what 1500 rpm of just power band and wheel speed so uh it feels good just to hear this thing run. I can't wait to get the interior in this thing, get the stance right for now until we could find the perfect wheel. These aren't bad in the meantime. And then just casually walking over a spoon was just tearing this thing apart. I mean, look at all the factory wiring. It is, it is terrifying, but already talking about, already talking to my buddy who does custom chassis harnesses and he can get us one super quick. And uh, I'm hoping this will all come together in three weeks. That's my goal, three weeks caged, sand on harness, all the drift goodies. And the biggest limitation to that is just waiting for stuff to show up. So I think that's a good timeline and I'm happy about it. But for now, I'm gonna end it. We took a risk with the engine today and it looks like it paid off. We'll see long-term, who knows? It is a built engine, things could still happen. There's a lot of custom work to that engine. I mean, it's sleeved, built mains, everything. It's not just like honed with a piston dropped into it. So there's a lot. And um, you know, we're putting stuff to the test and it's part of the process. So. Um, if I can get a couple damn drives in this thing, it'll just make me happy and make it feel all worth it, really. So, um, for now, we're going to end it. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, you guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. And Steve, have a good night.